On today's money, a crash course on reverse mortgages. They can help guarantee you stay in your home, but they may not be for everyone. Jean Chatsky is today's financial editor and author of Money Rules. Jean, good morning nice to you. Nice to see you. This sounds a little complicated, but because the recession has made people worry about their retirement over the next few years, you're getting asked about it a lot, aren't you? All the time. And from younger people, the number of people in their 60s who are actually looking at this has started to really creep up. What exactly, let's break it down and explain what it is. A reverse mortgage, in, by definition, is? Is you are pulling the equity back out of your home. You're taking a chunk of that equity, you're converting it into cash. You can get the cash in any one of three ways. You can get it as a stream of income payments, kind of like a pension. You can get it as a lump sum. You can also get it as a line of credit that you can draw on when you need it. You have to be 62 years old to qualify. We should point that out. Yeah, some of the pros, obviously, you get that guaranteed source of income, so you you don't need to worry as much, but then the ability to stay in your home over time. You get that, the ability to stay in your home over time. In fact, you can stay in your home until you die or until you've moved out for 12 months, at which point they have to, the, the bank has the right to get back the money. Even if you drain almost all the equity from the home, you can still stay there. The bank can't force you to move. Hmm. Some of the cons, fees are kind of pricey, right? These are not inexpensive loans. Yeah, you're looking at fees of anywhere from a couple thousand dollars up to $10,000. You also have to realize you can't get all the equity out of your home. You can get anywhere from about 60 to 80 percent of the value of your home. And as you get older, these get more attractive because the bank computes the amount of money that you're going to receive based on the amount of time that they think that you're going to live. Yeah, you mentioned that these have historically gone to older borrowers. I think the average age was somewhere around 73. But it's starting to fall. Right. Now the age of prospective borrowers, at least between 62 and 64, it's up, up by about 15% over the last decade or so. And again, we think this is because people have been so hard hit by the recession that they're looking for a way to make up that um, retirement income that they just didn't capture. All right, let's say, let's say for, a, for a moment that you're going to consider doing this. Okay. What's the first step? You need to start talking about your goals, I guess. Right? right. You need to know how much money do I need, how long do I need that money for, and quite frankly, why am I holding on to this house? Am I doing this for me? Am I doing it for my kids? Sometimes people think their kids will be just devastated if they don't get the house, and in reality, that's just not the case. So talk about it on the table. You're also going to have to go through counseling in order to get a reverse mortgage. HUD requires this of people, which is really, really good since these are complicated instruments. Huh. Okay. You're also going to need to pay some attention to taxes and how that's going to influence the whole equation? You have to continue to pay the taxes and the insurance on your property. So look at how much you're going to be taking. And if you live in a house with really high taxes, if that's not affordable for the long term, this is not something that you should do. Overall, is this something that's going to give someone who's going into retirement some peace of mind? Or is this something for someone who says, you know what, I've always wanted that dream house in Florida as well. Let's get that too. It can be both. It can actually be both. If you've got a significant amount of assets, it can be the dream home in Florida. For most people, what we're starting to see is that the equity in your home really can be looked at as another portion of your retirement portfolio that you can access even after your income has dropped off the map. What if you already have an existing mortgage? If you already have one, you have to pay that back out of the proceeds before you start drawing on the equity. So you receive $200,000 from a reverse mortgage, you owe $100,000, you only get 100 And then finally, requirements on the income you have to have? No requirements on the income. That's the great thing. Thing. It allows people who don't have an income anymore to tap the equity of their home when they wouldn't ordinarily be able to refinance. Well, it's funny. We used to think of the home as the emergency way to get some cash, but we're going to start. We're going to be hearing about this for the next few years for sure. Absolutely, but pay attention to the details because yeah. it can get pricey. As always, Gene Chatsky, thanks so much.